Okay, what I'm going to do is swing the scope round so it's pointing directly up there. Okay, so that is a star up there. So, and one of my passions is actually looking at it through a telescope. You shouldn't ever look through a telescope without a proper filter. And this one has got a proper filter on the front of it. This is a hydrogen alpha filter. That's actually what's called a double stack filter because there are two there. There's one on the top and another one at the bottom. And the purpose of that is basically to give you um, a narrower bandwidth of light coming through. Basically the filter just concentrates on a very, very, very tight bandwidth of light, or wavelength of light. That's the hydrogen alpha line. And by concentrating on that, as we're looking through the telescope, we can see all these amazing features like prominences and um, filaments and hot active regions. And that's what I hope I'm going to see now. So I'm just going to turn the telescope. I so often see astronomers using all this fancy equipment to uh, focus on astronomical objects. I, I take it perhaps with the sun it's a bit easier. You, know, you pretty much know where you're pointing. Um, yes and no, actually. It makes it a bit trickier because you've got the filter on the front. You don't get an awful lot of light through here. So there's a technique I've developed. But on the ground down there, you see the shadow of the telescope. But the telescope isn't pointing at the sun. Can you see the telescope looks like a like a sort of little mini telescope. But as I approach the position where the sun is, it turns into a cross section of the telescope. So it's like a circle. And that means the telescope is pointing more or less directly at the sun. Now, just to fine tune it, if I put my hand there, a red dot on my hand, that's basically the light coming through the filter. So you can see how much light is lost coming through that filter, because it's not very bright at all. Um, if I can line up properly, I've got to get that into the centre of my field of view, like so. Now I need to put another filter in, which is called a blocking filter. A well-used blocking filter, this one. And that should be it. It should be pointing at the sun now and ready for me to have a look at it. So if I switch to the... Pete, anyone watching this video is going to have to have noticed there's a little cat down there, so we better introduce, introduce that. Who's oh, this, that? Is, this is Pebbles, the astro cat. She sort of uh, comes out at night and uh, accompanies me in the garden. Right, so I've stuck a camera in the end of that telescope now. If I've done it right, I should be able to see the sun on my computer screen. Now this is, looks rather like a Heath Robinson arrangement here, and it is. This is basically a computer desk and I've got a framework built onto the top of it and this tarpaulin over the top of that. So that means that if I pull the tarpaulin over and they've got a laptop inside, if you can see that, but it's, also, it's gone nice and dark inside now so I can get a really good view of the sun. And I've lined up pretty well because I can see the edge of the sun on there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in here with you <laughs> and see what you I've see. I've never had a camera in with me. You all right? Can you focus yeah. on that? Oh, yeah. Can you see that? That's the edge of the sun. So that's the edge of the sun I'm looking at. Yeah, and you see that prominence there hanging off the edge? Oh, hang on, yeah, let me get my focus even. So on, we've got the edge of the sun here, that's the edge of the sun's disk. And then if you notice here, we've got something hanging off the edge of the sun. That's a prominence, that's basically a huge cloud of hydrogen. So that little tendril falling mm. off the bottom of the sun there. Yeah. How big is that? Well, you've got to bear in mind the sun is about um, 109 times the diameter of the Earth. So you could probably fit, I don't know, what, 10, 12 Earths along the length of that prominence there. So it's pretty big. They're absolutely enormous features. In fact, it doesn't really come across looking at them like that. It just looks like a tiny blip on the edge of something which isn't that immense. But when you consider the sun is about... Um, it's about 1.4 million kilometres in diameter. That's incredible. Now I've dropped the... Oh, things have changed now. I've changed it. I'm bringing you into a bit of surface detail now. So if we just pan around on the surface. The filter's not quite tuned, actually, which is a, an interesting, interesting um, feature of hydrogen alpha filters. You need to tune them so that they stay on band, so they're looking ex or centred on that hydrogen alpha wavelength. If they're slightly off, you lose some of the details and features. But you see the bright, bright region here, that's an active region on the sun's um, disk at the moment. In fact, what you're looking at there, you're not looking at the surface of the sun anymore. You're looking at a blanket of hydrogen which sits above the surface of the sun. It's about the same thickness as the diameter of the Earth, and that's called the chromosphere. 
and the chromosphere gives a, a, an appearance to the sun. It looks a bit like an orange. You can see these sort of features here. Okay, so we've got these sort of, this sort of mottling feature here, the background mottling. They're called dark mottles, and that's actually part of the structure of the chromosphere itself. The view here is actually quite blurred, I have to say, and that's because the atmosphere is wobbling. In amongst all the dark mottles, you've got these patches of bright there, which are called plage, from the French word for beach, and they're basically hot regions on the sun's surface where uh, the magnetic um, activity is at its highest. So they're connected normally with um, sunspot regions. You can see a couple of sunspots in that one there. Above it there's a small filament, in fact there's two of them, there's one there and another one up there. And these are um, elongated clouds held up above the chromosphere, so they're elevated above the chromosphere. And again, these are cooler hydrogen clouds. So it's a bit like if you were standing on the chromosphere um, in your asbestos suit and you were looking up, you'd see these clouds in the, uh, in the atmosphere. Now the filaments, when they rotate, because the sun rotates um, just like the Earth rotates, it takes it uh, about um, 35 days to rotate at the poles and about 20, 27 or so days to rotate at the equator. These features, like the filaments, get rotated off to the edge of the sun, and as they do that, if we look over to this side, which is where they will be rotated off the edge, that's when you end up with the bright prominences if you overexpose. So there we've got a prominence there. So that would have been a filament if we were looking at it silhouetted against the chromosphere. All of this we're looking at, up there, it's the, it's, the, it's the real thing, it's live. It's amazing, actually, when you consider that, when you consider that the... Do you ever consider that, or like, do you kind of get lost in the computer screen, or you or... Because when we were there just then, I could feel the sun beating down on my head, and I was looking at the picture. Do you always connect the two, or do you kind of get lost in it? Um, you do connect the two, and the times when you connect the two are when... Um, because there are satellites up there which are looking at the sun all the time. There's the GOES X-ray satellite, for example. Now, GOES will give you a plot of X-ray output from the sun, and you can look at that plot, and I can sometimes be working, and I can look at that plot, and I can see it going up, and I think, ah, oh, there's something happening on the sun. I can quickly rush and get the kit out, look at the sun, and I can see a flare going off on the sun's surface. That's a really energetic outpouring of charged particles, basically. And when you're sitting there doing that, you're thinking, Wow, just imagine if Go's plot showed you an enormous, <laughs> enormous peak. That X-ray burst would be coming down immediately. So, you know, you, there is a, a definite connection there. And a, it's not a concern, but you do wonder sometimes whether something big, you, you would witness something really big on the sun and it would give us something um, quite bad here on the Earth. I've got two of these. <laughs> I like to double up just in case I lose one. <laughs>